question is going to be, what is an acolone? Uh, very basic. Very NACA basic. loan is <clears throat> a loan um, funded by Bank of America through Neighborhood Assistance Corporations of America, which is what NACA stands for. And a NACA loan is a loan that uh, gives you a loan depending on the property type up to a certain amount of money. Like four units, you get a certain amount of money. Max three units, you get a max two units down to single family homes or whatever the case may be. But they give you these loans with no money down, no closing costs, the lowest interest rates in the country. In addition to the lowest interest rates in the country, you have the option to buy it down lower. And they give you the lowest interest rate in the country regardless of what your credit score is. So they don't necessarily go off your credit score, they go off your credit profile. You know what I mean? Mm. Like, you know, your rent history, things like that. Make sure you don't have any um, negatives in collections, you know, that kind of stuff. So it's a really, really great program for people who are just now getting started, who may have low income, yes. don't have the best credit or whatever the case may be. And it's not only for those kind of people, but it works best for those people. So um, it, for first time home buyers, mm -hmm. this can be this can be a product they can use. Oh, man, a product they can use to not just buy a single family home, but a multifamily home up to four units and even do a mixed use. Whereas you can have a storefront and apartments and a storefront. Like if you have a business, a barbershop, a clothing brand, a beauty salon, any of that kind of stuff, you can actually use it to go and get you a storefront for your business and a place to live and still be able to rent out some of the units. Okay, so you just answered all my questions in that short <laughs> sentence. So we got it. We got it. Hold on. So let's just go through the uh, qualifications for this. I know you mentioned okay. that already, but right. I kind of want to have it where it's like, you know, you can go through this and kind of have it in sections. So qualifications for uh, not alone are what exactly? All right. Two years tax history. Two years tax history. Two years work history. Of course, bank statements. Um, I think the minimum credit score that they require didn't used to be a thing, but now I think it's like 620, I Six, believe. 620? Yeah, I believe it's okay. 620 at this point. Um, in addition to that, um, yeah, I think that's it, man. Like the, the standard to, to qualify for a mortgage with anybody. Use the same stuff you got to do with them. And uh, when it comes to employment, you have to be two years, two years same W-2, W-2 yeah. stuff. So, so if it's not at the same company, they will be okay with you transitioning in the same field right, for okay. more pay. You know what I mean? If they if they see that you you know transition to get a higher pay grade, right. they're fine with that. But if you just switch jobs and you went to a whole nother you know what I mean yeah, uh, yeah. field and all that stuff, they'll start it over from where you you know start your new job at. Okay, so then how much money do you need down for? Um for for to buy a house with an alcohol. Well, you don't need anything as a down payment, but okay. I tend to tell people to save up about three and a half percent of the cost of the property that you're looking for because you are going to have certain things that you have to pay for, you know, at the closing table, your right. taxes, your insurance, things like that. And also NACA wants you to have what's called a payment shock or a uh, significant amount of money saved up for a cushion. So when you do close on your property, they don't want you to be house rich and cash, cash poor. Right. And MG talks about that all the time because a lot of times when you go through different programs and different lenders, you will spend all of the money that you saved up on fees, closing costs and all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. Now, you have this house or property or whatever the case may be, and then as soon as something goes wrong, now you upside down, can't get it fixed, you messed up because you don't have the cash to take care of, you have an established business credit, just any of these kind of things, to whereas you can kind of make sure that you're going to be okay regardless of what, you know what I mean, circumstances yeah. may arise. And that can set you up to be able to handle all of those situations. So, yeah, they don't require you to put a down payment or any of that stuff, but they do require you to save up a cushion to make sure that you're protected, you know what I mean, on the back end after you do close. So with that, with that cushion of money saved up total, how much did you have? Um, just to be prepared um so on my first deal i started off with 10 and as i went through the process you know they still require you to save money you just yeah. don't stop there you still are required to show that you're saving the same amount of money every month uh, okay. so by the time i closed i ended up with fifteen thousand dollars in my account but i didn't use any of it i right. actually walked away from the closing table with money oh wow yeah okay so i kept all of my money and they gave me some money <laughs> all right so uh, yeah I'll, I'll ask that later um, <laughs> get some more information about that um okay so now what do the interest rates look like with these kind of uh with these kind of loans so with naca they guarantee you um a lower than the national average interest rate regardless of what your credit score is which is one of the major benefits to the program because if you know anything about interest rates interest rates can drastically drive up the cost of your mortgage your monthly payment Right. Just extra money that you paying over time to the bank, all of those things. And um, NACA really tries to set you up, like I said, to whereas you're well off to the point where 
they give you the lowest interest rate to get your mortgage payment down, yeah. where you will always be able to afford this. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Like, All so right. for me, on my first one, I got a 2.5% interest rate. Then on the second one, it's a 0.8% interest rate, which is essentially free. So on the second one, I just made a video about this on my page. I gave NACA $70,000 up front to buy my interest rate down, but that $70,000, it saved me $400,000 over the life of the loan. Wow. Yeah. So, like, that would have been an extra four hundred grand that I just would have been given to yeah. the bank in interest. Right, right, right. Which now I can, you know what I mean, comes back into my pocket. I can reinvest, go buy more property, et cetera. And two, it made my mortgage way more than affordable and allowed me to cash flow on this property as well. So not only did it get my interest rate down, but it got my mortgage payment down. It kept my rents high and it generated, you know, cash flow because that's money that I'm not necessarily paying to the bank and it's just coming back to me. So when you do this kind of loan, do do um does it have to be like a primary residence or it can it be an investment? Be a primary residence. So NACA requires you to live in the property um, for at least the first five years, and they even have a lien on a property of twenty five thousand dollars. But every year that oh, you live okay. in the property, five thousand of that drops off. So after the fifth year, you can kind of like go refinance, do whatever it is that you want to do to kind of like you know move on with your investment journey. Yeah. Everybody doesn't do it to become an investor. Some people do it just to you know what I mean have a free place to have live place or whatever the case may be. But me personally. I want to do it, you know what I mean? Like, so I've been in my first one for eight years. The second one has been five years. So now I can go and do whatever I want to do with either one of those properties and the equity in those properties. But as me and Matt talked about previously, I had issues because I wasn't filing my taxes the right way. So mm. I'm just now able to go and pull the equity out of my properties to go and reinvest into more buying holds and different things like that. Um, so that's a that's another thing. Like, NACA make sure that you're buying into equity. You're not, like, upside down. They won't let you do a bad deal. They won't allow it. Right. So this is not, you can't use, this is not like an LLC situation. It has to be personal. No. Nah, so, but the thing is, this is what I did. After I closed, I set up a business structure for it. You know, right. I do have an uh, incorporation uh, for both of my properties or whatever the case may be because it's, I operate it and run it like a business. You know what I mean? Yeah. So you don't buy it in your LLC, but you operate it as such. And is there um, is there any type of property that you can't get with this kind of loan? I mean, yeah, commercial. Just commercial? Yeah, you can do mixed use. Like I say, anything residential up to four units is allowed with NACA. Okay. Um, and what about the loan terms for this? 30 year fixed 30 year and fixed it, and it's and it's crazy because people think that it's like some type of special it's a conventional loan right not a conventional loan okay uh matt's looking at me he's like wants no to no jump, no, no. you do you, you do, okay. do, do you <laughs> all right <laughs> so um learn brother learn <laughs> all right so one of the biggest things with this kind of loan is that i always hear about this mm -hmm. is how long it takes and how tedious it is mm -hmm. so what can you do to be prepared to make this e this process easier for you. I have your documents all the way in order and be ready to, you know, stand up and fight for what's yours because at the end of the day, these people, it's not their job to do you any favors. You know what I mean? They're right. there to like, you know what I mean, kind of execute, you know what I mean, what they're supposed to do to get you your loan approved. So anything as far as you following up, maybe resending documents, all of those things, those are things that you're going to have to do. And like, get out your feelings because a lot of times, like, when I first started with NACA, like, I would be in my feelings like, man, I sent you all those documents already. Why y'all asking me for this again? It's, it's just yeah. a part of the mortgage process. Like, right. if you understand how the mortgage process works, if you understand how home buying works, if you just understand how dealing with big money works, it's not just ever a quick process. Right. It won't ever be that. So more than anything, you have to have your documents in order. Like I say, your, your tax documents, your, your check stubs, your bank statements. And these things have to be turned in on time to them when they require them. Right. A lot of times that's what holds people up. And not to just blame everything on the person, because sometimes it's NACA. Mind you, these people are understaffed and way overworked. And like I tell people all the time, I'm doing all of these shows, stages, platforms, screaming from the mountaintops, go get a NACA property, y'all, go get a NACA property. <laughs> so now there's an influx in the NACA program of people trying to get properties, and they're not hiring more people, mind you, because they're a non-for-profit. So they don't have a big budget to go out and just hire a bunch of people, et cetera. So if you can be patient, you can be successful. But if you're trying to move in the next three months, I wouldn't suggest you going through the NACA program because all it's going to do is frustrate you. And a lot of times when people are going through these processes, yeah. they operate in their feelings. And right. you can't do that. You have to be a logical person when it comes to this stuff. Like, And you have to also put like entitlement and selfishness to the side. It, it doesn't work on your time or when you want it to. Like, man, once everything is cleared through the bank, through the underwriter, that's when things will go. But until then, understand patience. Understand this is a process. Understand 
I'm going to do everything that I need to do in order to make this work. And then I'm going to leave the rest up to God. But because outside of that, what else can you do? Right. You're going to be mad. You're going to be frustrated. You're going to be angry. Like you're going to be in your feelings yeah. all the time because things ain't going how you want it to go. And that's just not how this stuff goes. So you said three months, right? You shouldn't like you should, probably man, shouldn't. Three have months, six months, man. I would. And it can happen in that time frame. Yeah. But I just wouldn't have expectations, expectations for it to happen. Right. For I'm putting nine months to a year. Nine months That's to a year for not everybody. Long. Nine months to a year. If you get it before then, you did great. But the standard is going to be nine months to a year for sure. And that's and that's not just NACA because you have to factor in the searching process. You know, you get a property under contract. You got to go through the inspection, the appraisal. All that stuff takes time. In addition to that, you're not going to get a contract on the first property you make an offer on most times. You know what I mean? So you're going to go through the searching process, offering, getting denied, like right. getting outbid by cash buyers. There's a whole process to this stuff that people really don't understand. That's why I'm saying remove your emotion from it because you get so caught up in the aesthetics like, oh, my God, I love the house. That's my dream house. <laughs> now somebody with a million dollars cash just swooped in and like took it right yeah. from under you and you mad because you feel like, oh, well, they did this to me. Like nobody did anything to you that's just the nature of the business right and most times people don't understand that so is there any limits to how much money you can like how much the house can be with this kind of loan also no not really it just depends on the, the area and the neighborhood so like in a place like new york i think y'all got a limit on four units of like 1.5 million dollars like oh, wow. you know what i'm saying like you can go pretty high it, it just depends on the property type single family right. homes are way less you probably get three four hundred thousand for a single family home you might get 500 for a two unit. You might get 700 for a three unit. That's why I tell people like, man, max out, go with a four unit because they don't only qualify and you get scared because like, I can't afford a $1 million mortgage. Like you can, because yeah. the way lenders qualify you is not the same way they qualify you for a single family home that they do for a multi-unit. Right. And when you do go for a multi-unit, Go and find you something where the property is already generating income because what will happen is the lender is going to take 75% of the income that the property is already generating, mm -hmm. add it to your money, which will then make the property more than affordable. And the best example I like to give, and I give this same example all the time. Yeah. So let's say you make $2,000 a month at your job, right? Okay. And the mortgage on the property that you're looking at, it's a four unit. It's three thousand dollars. No way you could afford it. You're a thousand dollars short on top of having to pay expenses like bills, gas bills, mm -hmm. all that stuff, right? But let's say the property is generating four thousand dollars a month in rents. So the lender will take seventy five percent of that, which is three thousand dollars. Okay. Add it to your two thousand dollars. So now you're making five thousand dollars a month with a three thousand dollar mortgage, which leaves two thousand dollars left over. That's more than affordable for you. Also, what they're doing is taking the, the money that you're going to make technically when you purchase the house. Just a portion of it. You still have 25% right. that they're not even factoring in. Right. That's crazy. And most people don't know this, which is why they think they can't afford a multifamily because yeah. their thinking is based on their money alone. And it is if you go and get one that's empty. Right. But the cheat code is going to find something that's already cash flowing. You know how many older landlords or people out here who are trying to get rid of properties, they're tired of them, people are going through divorce, they just want to get rid of their property <laughs> just so they can, you know, get out of this situation? Like, yeah. there are a ton of those situations going on. But again, you just have to be patient. Like, everything is about patience. Right. Like most times people end up in a situation that they look back on, regret, have buyer's remorse and all those things because they didn't exercise patience. They didn't wait for, like, what God really had for them. They were so anxious and wanted to be, you know, flicking it up for the gram. Like, I just bought a property, <laughs> y'all. It's just like, yeah. like honestly, you just, you just missed your blessing because right. you were rushing. You know what I mean? But if you actually patient and you can understand how to run the play the right way, you can really set yourself up. Because, bro, in three years, from 2015 to 2018, I accumulated one and a half million dollars worth of assets through the NACA program. Cash flow was able to not have to go back to the workforce, started businesses, a clothing brand, a uh, book. I'm a uh, author. Like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm speaking on every stage, every yeah. podcast. It's just like, bro, like just one property can do that for you if you do it the right way and not get so caught up in image, but just focus on numbers and actual cash flow and the things that make sense to your bottom line. Most people don't do that, though. They're so caught up in image. Right, right. Um, and is there any type of insurance, uh, PMI with this? No, that's Nothing. what I'm saying. That's the sweet part about it. Like you don't have any of those excess fees. So what I tell people all the time, closing costs typically add up when you factor in your down payment, your agent fee, your attorney fee, your origination fee, your PMI, probably somewhere on the high end, 10, 12% roughly, Matt. 
Mm-hmm. Right, for what PMI? No, just for just overall fees in general. Oh, probably like five, five, six percent. Yeah. So overall costs. fees, once you factor in your down payment fee, most times three and a half percent. Right. You got your origination fee. Your agent gonna get a fee. Like all of these fees add up and money that you gonna have to pay out at the end. Yeah. You know what I mean? So like, if you can avoid those. That's how I was able to, like, at the end of everything, I kept, I had a bag because I didn't have to pay all of those fees. Most times, you're paying that out. Right. You know, and down payment, you're paying it out to an attorney, you're paying it out to an agent, you're paying it out to the lender who's originating your, because they got to get paid off your shit, too. Like, just everybody got to get their money, and that could kind of, like, takes care of that for you. So, there was this video that you were talking about earlier mm-hmm. um, that you walked away from the closing table with a $5,000 check. Mm-hmm. And you kept your fifteen thousand dollars down, yeah. right? So how were you able to do that? Uh, because, like I said, the program doesn't have a down payment requirement, so there's no down payment. Right. In addition to that, you can get what's called a seller concession when you are purchasing a property. So you can pretty much ask the seller for money. You know what I mean? At the closing table to help you with closing costs. Mm. Me, I didn't have any closing costs. My agent knew I didn't have any closing costs, so we were just going to use the money to buy the interest rate down. So we asked for a fifteen thousand dollar closing credit. We used ten thousand to buy the interest rate down, and then there was five thousand dollars left, and that five thousand oh, okay. came back to me. NACA doesn't allow this anymore for you to walk away with oh, cash on the okay. table anymore, but. That particular deal, I was able to at the time because, like I say, they had gave all of this excess money. It was like, all right, cool. Where the extra money go? Yeah. It goes to the buyer because that's who they gave it to. Is there any other fees associated with this at all? That I mean, so about? NACA has a membership fee. It's like $30, $40 a month or something like that okay. as you're going through the process. But honestly, I can't remember paying that fee like that. And then once I closed, I never dealt with NACA again. My relationship is between me and Bank of America because that's who has my mortgage. So right. I send in my money. If anything going on with my mortgage, that's who I reach out to. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I don't really communicate with NACA unless it's like for me to be like, you know, doing something social media wise or, you yeah, know what yeah. I mean? Something like that. If I want to collaborate with them. But outside of that, like, I'm not communicating with them about my mortgage or like any of my property anymore. OK, so a lot of good information there. Um, answered all my questions. Sure. Now, the real question is, how are you able to go from one from one home with this loan to multiple or even be able to live rent free in your situation? OK, so in my situation, I was already living rent free because it cash flowed enough to where it's like my portion of the or what. So the property was generating enough money to cover the mortgage and the bills. And there was okay. still money left over pretty much with me living there. And over time, it's been eight years. I've increased the rents over time constantly in eight mm. years i didn't probably gave myself probably a three thousand dollar raise you know what i'm right, saying right, right. so it's like but uh, also over time you know taxes and insurance go up too so that kind of eats away at that so like i said initially when i first got the property i was cash flowing probably five or six hundred dollars a month now i'm cash flowing seventeen hundred dollars a month i made improvements to the property like i say i've gone up on the rents because of the improvements to the property and also because of inflation and things like that so it allows me to live for free and cash flow because I have these fixed low interest rates and I bought at a great time at a great price. So you have multiple properties or just yeah, this one? So the second one, I took my girl back, the whole divide and conquer thing again. Y'all hear Matt talk about this all the time. Yeah, yeah. And we got a second one. And with this one, I really milked the program because I knew how to qualify for bigger loans. And, you know, I found out that they will max you out at $950,000, depending on if it's a four unit. And in mm-hmm. Chicago, $950,000 can get you in a really, really nice neighborhood. So I was able to purchase in a neighborhood called Bucktown, Worker Park, which is probably one of the top three neighborhoods in the city right now. Okay. Um, and with this one, I purchased it. In a gentrifying neighborhood called Humble Park, it used to be like a, a very like strong Puerto Rican neighborhood. But like I said, it's gentrifying. So the mm-hmm. person who sold us the property was an older Puerto Rican guy, but he was also a developer. And he was the person who kind of like built the place up. He bought it for dirt cheap, fixed it up, made it really nice. And it's a four unit, but one of the units is a house. So there's mm-hmm. a three unit building in the front and then there's a house. And it's not a regular coach house. Y'all call them ADUs out right. here. He laid it out. Like I say, 12 foot coffered ceilings like floating stairs cherry oak floors just like he like went crazy with the finishes that's why i'm able to do so well with pier space because of the house (laughs) right um and he wanted to do a deal with us like i said because so many like you know white investors and people were coming in lowballing him and he just didn't like the numbers that they were offering him so when a young black couple came in he's like i will give y'all whatever y'all want 
to get this deal closed because I did really well. I bought this property when it was dirt cheap, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, and now yeah. it's skyrocketed in value because the neighborhood has changed. So I'm, I'm, I'm able to give y'all whatever y'all want. So we told him we needed forty thousand dollars, and 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 sell his concessions. He was like, "Say less." So he gave us that. I pulled money that I had out of the stock market and had savings. She had her down payment, and we worked the play. Bought the interest rate down from three and a half percent to zero point eight percent. Bought some of the principal down, which made the mortgage way more than affordable, which also allowed us to cash flow off the three units again. Mm. And 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 with that one, I'm not able to be on the mortgage because you can't go through NACA twice, right? Right. But again, there are legal ways that you can become an owner. After we closed, we went to an attorney and we added my name to the deed as a quick claim deed, just so in case anything were to happen to her. God forbid the property will go to me as opposed to her mom, sister, dad, yeah. that closest relative because I'm the person who essentially helped pay for the property. Right, right, right. So right. legally, it's a 50-50 split. We got an LLC. That's a 50-50 split. So that's how that worked. So now if you get this, so technically, since you said it takes a while with this, in my head, I'm thinking if you use an ACA loan, can, I mean, it's not technically supposed to be an investment property, right? No. But you I mean, can, it, it's so you can't say it's an investment property in like, in terms when you're talking to them, but essentially that's what it is. If it's making money, like that's what, you know I'm, what saying. I'm saying. Like it's a multi-unit that's making money. Like, but you can't say that to the bank. Like I have an investment property because they just that's not what it's designed to be or to or to be used for. Right. But to us, that's what it is because we know we're investors. You know what I mean? Right, and right, I'm just right. going to use this to go invest more and buy more property. But what if you wanted to use that that property for, you know, to to do a peer space or something like that? I mean, we'll stop you. That's what I'm saying. So you technically could yeah. wait. You I could, do it. Right. So if, you, if you're not a first time home buyer and you want to use NACA, you can use it to have that sort of as an investment property. If no. You wanna... So what you have to do if you own a property already, you would either have to sell your property, move it out of your name to a business entity or okay. something like that, because you, like NACA has to be your primary residence. Got you. Okay. And how you become an investor after you utilize the NACA program you use the NACA program to go get you the biggest, nicest, best house you can find with these low rates, all of that kind of stuff. Live there. Yeah. Take the money that you just saved. Mind you, I told you I walked away with $26,000 cash. Right. Start okay. your investment journey there. Live I there and it. just go invest. Like, I don't see why that's so hard for people. People, like I say, everybody want to move so fast. That, yeah, I want to oh, yeah. move out of the property. Then I want to flip and I want to do this. It's like, bro, chill. <laughs> learn the process first. Like, y'all be trying to, like, run before y'all, like, actually crawl and walk. And it just don't make sense because you don't even know how any of this stuff works for real yeah, most times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Agreed. You know what right. I'm saying? Like, he'd be like, yeah, I'm going to do a refinance. I'm like, bro, do you realize you have to qualify for that? You know, like, they just not going to give you you know, money that's in the house because you say, yeah, that's my yeah. money. Like, no, you have to qualify for that because at some point you have to pay that back. Right. On right. top of your mortgage that you have to pay back. Yeah. And people don't know this stuff or like just really know, again, how mortgages or any of these things work. So they get caught up with the Internet terms and mm -hmm. seeing the little 30 second clips and thinking like they know some shit when the whole time it's like, bro, there is a whole process to this that you have no idea about. And you can't learn it by watching 30 second clips all day. That's a clip, though. <coughs> what you just said. That was That's definitely it. a clip. <laughs> That's a clip. <laughs> that was definitely a clip. That's I a ain't going to hold you up. That's a fact. Um, so, yeah, I mean, he pretty much answered all my questions. I know Matt has a, has probably more advanced questions. No, I really don't. I think um, he said a lot. You <laughs> yeah, know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, we talked like, about this shit like, so many times. I mean, like, I'm just saying. I know, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> like, I mean, guys, what else you want us to say about this shit? <laughs> but I think the key points that he was saying is, one, patience. Patience, yeah. Right? Because I see people in the comments like, oh, it takes forever. Like, what are you rushing for? If you can get, my man said he has a 0.8% interest rate. That's great. Yeah, that's that's wild. What are you rushing for? <laughs> <laughs> like, like, and I tell people this all the time. First of all, I do not originate NACA loans. I have no benefit of doing this yeah. type of content. Mm -hmm. Wait, so where do we go to get, where, where can do you NACA. go to? Yeah, NACA, okay. NACA. You have to go through their process. Go to gotcha. NACA. You got to go to their meetings. You got to go through their process. It's painful. Yeah, okay. Right? If you don't have the right expectations, if you know you're going to submit your documents 100 times and mm -hmm. your, your counselor might not pick up, like, you got to understand how many people they're working with, too, at the same time. And I think people don't really understand that. They think they're the only person, right? Mm -hmm. Even if you call my team sometimes, hell, you might not get us. 
That's what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. Like, and, like, I, and, like, I, and I, and I, and I try to tell saying, people this all the time. We're busy. Man. I'll be like, like, I'm sorry. We try our best. And, and, and I love that you said that mm-hmm. because it's like people think it's just NACA. It's like, no, this is the mortgage process. Like, yeah. you're a yeah. first time home buyer. So you don't need, you don't know shit off, out the gate. You don't know nothing. Yeah. So to assume <laughs> that, oh, they slower than that. How you know? Yeah. Because you, it's hearsay. You're basing everything off of hearsay that you stuff that you see on the internet but whole time regardless of what lender you go through this is the process it's going to take time if your documents ain't in order if you have trust issues with people going through your bank account like this is it's going to be a headache for you this is going to be a headache like it's going to be a headache it's going to be a big ass headache look the mortgage process is not a streamlined friendly process per se regardless of who you go through no matter what lender you go through no matter what loan officer you work with it's a process because it's not automated to a certain extent because even with technology today, you can upload documents, do online loan applications. I mean, that's helped a lot. Hell, when I first came in this business, we were doing handwritten 1003s, like literally. When you guys say documents, though, what documents are you talking about specifically? Your W-2s, your tax returns, pay stubs. And like you have you, to update that every, like, every, yeah, every time yeah. they come out, man, because yeah. they got to make sure that everything that you're saying is lining up and being consistent with what you're saying. Because at the end of the day, man, like I said, you're, you're essentially asking somebody to borrow hundreds of thousands up to millions of dollars from them. And you trying to say you don't want to be transparent? Like, what? Like, why? What? You, yeah. Like, that doesn't even make sense. Like, you can't go borrow this money from your mama, your daddy, your auntie. Your, this this is the only place you can go get this money from, and you want to give these people a problem. Yeah, no, I agree with that, too, right? Um, first of all, it's, it's I think it has a lot to do with entitlement sometimes. And maybe that's the wrong word. I don't no, know. No, that's the right no, word. You speak it sometimes right. folks just come into this situation like, yo, I got a 780 credit score, this, that, and third. I feel like my eyelashes in my eye. But, like, they come in and like, yo, I got this credit score. I got this job. I should be good. Yeah. Well, and I should like, be priority. And it's yeah. just like, you know how many people got these same yeah. numbers? <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> like, like, it'd be like, all right, about? cool. That's nice. Uh, yeah, seven is cute. Yeah. Right? But it's a process. No matter who you go through, and I think the first step is setting your expectations correctly when you're trying to go through the loan process. Right? Expectations have to be set. If you And this is why we speak about NACA and all these programs kind of repetitively now is because we have new audience people who come. They want to learn this information. So we want to continue to feed our audience, but we're also trying to train you for when you go through this process. Yo, have patience. Like Dre said, if you're trying to buy a house within the next six months and you need yeah. to close fast, knock is probably not for you. Nope. Mm-hmm. Right? It's just probably not. It's a year. Period. Mm-hmm. Now, that's just to get NACA approved. Once you get NACA approved in six to 12 months, then you have to go out and shop and find the house. Oh, so it doesn't work the other way. Oh, I can't work the other way. Cause no, because basically yeah. when you're going through the NACA process, you're going through their pre-approval process. And their pre-approval right. is not like if you come to me, you want to do an FHA conventional VA loan, and I say, give me all your income documents, and we re- review everything, yeah. and literally within 24 hours or 15 minutes, depending on how busy we are, we can give you a letter and say, hey, go shop for a home. Yeah. Right? Yeah. A NACA is, first of all, it's a non-for-profit organization. It has government subsidies. That's why they're able to offer these type of type of loans because they're getting a lot of government back stuff. Yep. And then you have their, the bank that they use is Bank of America, okay. right? So Bank of America is actually the people who are going to underwrite you once you get a contract. But NACA has to make sure that you are vetted properly before you even get to that point. And that process is going through their meetings and going through the system. And that's where it can get strenuous because you also have to realize, too, the people that's working for NACA, mm-hmm. d- and no disrespect. Keep it above. Let me ju- I just, I just want to be respectful, right? They're not training these fo- They're not loan officers. They're not right. licensed professionals like myself. These are people who are pr- probably making minimum wage or a little bit above. Facts. Think about your typical Walmart worker, your typical... Um, target worker you know someone you'll see in a department yeah. store yeah right um that's helping you yeah they you how many times have anybody been in one of these stores and you ask for help and no and one they helps have you? no clue 
Yeah, or they have no clothes. Yeah. yeah. Right? It's like they they hiring like pretty much just nine to five workers. And exactly. their job is to just put your documents through to the underwriter. Like and the yeah. underwriter is the person who approves you and makes decisions. Mm-hmm. Essentially they're they're just paper pushers. No Basically. disrespect. Yeah. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Like some are knowledgeable uh, and different things, but a lot of times they don't own property themselves. Right. They've right. never done a deal. They're not familiar with the whole real estate process. They just know how to submit paperwork and to, documents. To the program to itself. To the program itself. Yeah. yeah. So, it's again, they're not me. They're not an MG, the mortgage uh-huh. guy. You come to me. I'm well-versed in pretty much any loan program mm-hmm. under the blue sun because this is my craft. Someone who's working there, that's probably a means to an end. That's it. Yeah. Right? Now, you have people who make a career out of it and everything. They move up. Great. Congratulations to them. Right? But... A lot of people who work into these type of things, they're not taking their job seriously. Let's just call it space. Yeah, they're not space. real estate professionals. Even think about the people who are working in the everyday department stores that we all go into, the, the local supermarkets and this, that, and that. Then they, that's a check. That's it. That's, I, have to, I hate being here. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, but I have no choice because this is probably the only employment that is available for me based off of where I am right now in my life. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So when you go to these meetings, you have to have that in mind and also give grace. Yep. It's okay to give people grace in life. Like if you have, you guys got to be conscious of, of this and the more grace you give to people, the more grace will come back to you. You know, you catch more bees with honey than shit. So what Matt's saying is don't be in there cussing out the uh, the mortgage counselors and all that because things not going your way or things not going as fast as you like. Don't be sending no nasty emails and all that because at the end of the day, all it's going to do is make them not want to work with you. Think about at your job, right? You got to have email etiquette. Yeah. Right? Etiquette, yeah. I fucking used to go crazy on emails. <laughs> <laughs> like super savage, like... Like, you know, <laughs> my tone is coming through. It sounds like me. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm aggressive. <laughs> right. But once I had to realize, like, wait a minute, I don't know how these people are receiving this, even with a text message. Right. Sometimes I got to delete the text message because it might come off like I'm like being aggressive when I'm really not. Yeah. Right. Because people receive things differently. So if you're going through this program, give the people grace, man. Give them the honey. If you give them the shit, you ain't going to catch the beam. You right. give them the honey, you're going to catch the bee because ultimately that person across the desk could be one of your family members too. And also, they might be able to push your process through a little faster and smoother Yeah. because you're being nice to them and everybody else is being an asshole or a dickhead to them all day long. So you yeah. got to think about what they're going through. These NACA meetings, if you ever go to one, y'all, there'll be hundreds of people there. You might think you had Invest Fest, but no, this is NACA. Facts. And they're all there for free money. Facts. Right? So think about the 15, 20 counselors that they might have on staff that day, and you got 300 people that they got to sit there all day long yeah. to deal with. Right? It's painful for them, too. So that's why I tell people look, when you're going through this process, go through it with grace. Go through it having your expectations set the proper way. Don't go in here being a fucking. Tyrant. A tyrant. You know what I'm saying? And you out here just attitude for no damn reason because you feel like you're entitled. <laughs> if, you, if it's that much, then go get a regular loan then, baby. Yeah. 